Welcome back to West Lafayette, Ross Age Stadium. Partly sunny, temperature crisp and cool in the upper 40s. It may stretch out to the uh, lower 50s before this day is done. And it is uh, Big Ten country and Big Ten weather. Ohio State will receive to start the ball game here this afternoon. Light winds blowing uh, out of the north, keeping it somewhat cool here. Temperatures were in the 30s in these parts last night. Seems to have warmed up. Yeah, it's warmed up a little bit. But <laughs> it's not Florida warm, but it's warming up. Back deep to receive for the Ohio State Buckeyes. That's Lamar Thomas. And here's the kickoff by Carson Wiggs. It is Thomas from the 10. Stacked up short of the 25-yard line. Prior to the sophomore, Jeanette Pennsylvania had an outstanding freshman year, has struggled a little bit in the passing game this season, but he's got new offensive linemen and new skill position people with him this year. Prior running option. And down he goes. Kerrigan and Gerald Gooden collaborate on the tackle. And we take a look at the road. Tell Belvita starting lineup because you can't start your game day without their famous queso dip. For the Buckeyes, backs and receivers, Brandon Sain's going to carry the mail offensively with Boom Heron down due to injury. On the offensive line, they're young. Michael Brewster in the middle leads the way. Fryer fake the handoff, fumbles the football. Boilermakers have it. Or do they? Yes, they do. Purdue football, it looked like Kerrigan got in there and tomahawked the ball away from Pryor. And the Boilermakers come away with it. If you want to be a star, be a star in a big game. Kerrigan has flashed all season. He just blows by the tight end, gets to the quarterback prior, but also has the wherewithal to strip the ball out. This is a conscious thought. Look at him working, getting the ball out of there, putting his team down in a very winnable situation. Great start for Purdue's defense. Mike Neal made the fumble recovery. First and 10 at the 20-yard line of Ohio State for the Boilermakers. It's usually Purdue that gives up the football deep in its own territory, not the Buckeyes. Purdue, a fast-starting team. And let's see if they can get that going here. And they reverse it. Looking to throw into the end zone for Valentine. Incomplete. I'll tell you what, that was a well-executed play. Keith Smith. A very well-executed play indeed, but also a very well-covered play by Chimdi Chekwa. you got to come out with trickery early. Hope knows that. But watch Chekwa right there. He doesn't go for all the action up front. He is a pass defender first, a relying on his assignment and playing that well. Pretty good pass by Keith Smith. It Not was. Bad. Valentine did everything he could to go up and get that ball, too. Second and ten. They bunch three receivers at the bottom of your screen. Quarterback draw, not getting much. Here's a look at Joey Elliott. 12 touchdowns, but nine interceptions. Purdue, one of the, the most turnover-prone team in the Big Ten. This is third down. Not enough for the first down, as Ralph Bolden got the swing pass, but he does get his kicker a little bit closer. Down to the 15-yard line. So a gain of five, and Carson Wiggs comes on for a field goal try which for him should be pretty much a chip shot. Well, that was an interesting play, Wayne, because that's the actual play that they wanted to run on second down, but it was a busted assignment, came back just to set up their field goal kicker. But in a game like this, you got to score touchdowns, not field goals. Carson Wiggs has hit a season-long of 59. This from 32 is through the uprights. So the Purdue Boilermakers take advantage but only for three of their turnover forced in the red zone but a great start for that defense though because you were anxious to see them set the temperament and it started with ryan Kerrigan. carson wiggs ready to kick it away they keep it away from ray small here comes lamar thomas from the five to the 20 to the 25 right sidelines and wiggs Angles him out of bounds in front of the Ohio State bench across the 35-yard line, 32-yard return. 
Well, the Purdue defense wasn't on the field long enough for us to give you the long enough. So, Rotel Belvita, here we go. I like Mike Neal, a big, strong guy up front, strongest member of this defensive unit. Ryan Kerrigan, very active on the outside. The linebacking core has been very good. Jason Werner finally getting to play as a fifth-year senior. He's been hobbled by injuries throughout his career, but he's a good one. Brandon King, David Pender, very good on the corners. And the safeties, you were really impressed with what you saw in pregame. Pass the eyeball test. Brandon Sane, nice hole to the 40-45. Williams brings him down across the 50 in Purdue territory near the 46, a 20-yard gain. This is just a little inside handoff. You're going to see Sane, he's going to take it and cut it up the middle. Well designed, good blocking up front. That's where you got to get off blocks if you're Purdue. The first guy hitting you is a safety. That's not a good sign. Linebackers know where to be found. Here's a look at Brandon Sane's work, averaging five yards a pop. First down. That's Sane alongside of Pryor. And Pryor looks to the air behind good protection. Sane, the outlet. And he makes the first man beat down the sideline to the 25-20. To the 15, spinning to the 10. It's first and goal, Ohio State at the six-yard line of Purdue. Torrey Williams makes a touchdown saving tackle. Back-to-back -back plays to Brandon Sane for 20 and now 40 yards. And Wayne, this isn't an easy play, play to make by Werner, but if he stops Sane right there, it's a six-yard gain. You have to get him on the ground. It's an open field tackle. I know it's challenging, but you have to minimize the damage. First and goal to go. Six-yard line of Purdue for Ohio State. Pryor fakes to Sane. Trying to beat his man around the corner, and he does. Got by Jason Werner for the score. Terrell Pryor on a six-yard touchdown run. With Terrell Pryor, you have to understand this simple fact. He is always looking to get the ball outside on the perimeter when he runs it. So you have to keep him boxed in. Werner can't let him get the edge there. Put a fence around him, force him back inside to where the rest of the defense is. He is the second leading rusher for Ohio State. That was his ninth rushing touchdown of the season. Point after by Aaron Petri. So the Buckeyes, after an early miscue, roar right back and take the lead on this fake and run by Terrell Pryor, 7-3 Ohio State. Jason Taylor muffs it. He's to the 10, to the 15, and fights his way close to the 20-yard line and did well to get there. Special teams, a big difference in these two clubs. Purdue is not a very deep team, and thus on special teams, they're not able to play as many starters as they would like because they've got their starters on offense and defense going basically the full game. Well, their special teams was an atrocity last week. And every time you see a ball hit the carpet for Purdue, you kind of hold your breath because you've seen that movie before. They have to have ball security. Can't muff the kicks. First and ten for the Boilermakers. Just short of their 20-yard line. Elliott, quick release. This is Valentine. Valentine stacked up while they're trying to grab the ball away from him, but he was able to get it across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And a first down. We'll tell Velveeta starting lineup because you can't start your game day without their famous queso dip. Ralph Bolden is the runner that we'll look at here today. The receivers relatively inexperienced. A couple of junior college kids will play in that receiving core. Jared Zwilling leads a big offensive line. An open set here, Wayne. Five wide. Three to the bottom of your screen. And here's Elliott. The open receiver is Carlos, and he's out of bounds. Close to the first down near the 43-yard line in Purdue territory. Second down. We'll make it first and ten. First and ten, they just changed the chains across the way. Mishandled handoff. Ball up for grabs. Buckeyes have it. Elliott trying to hand the football to Ralph Bolden. It never got accomplished, and Ohio State's got it. Boy, we talked about seeing this movie. He just doesn't even have a handle on the ball. 21st turnover this season for Purdue. Second most in FBS football. First and 10 
44-yard line of Purdue. Sane ran right into Werner. Werner gave up a couple of huge plays on that first drive by Ohio, that second drive by Ohio State, but he answers the call here. Loss of two on the previous play. Pryor under center. Thomas in motion. They fake the reverse. Pryor back to throw. Nice setup to Sane. Good recovery. Penalty marker down. They're going to get Bourne on a hold. And an excellent play made by Brandon King, the cornerback. Despite being held, he made the tackle. <laughs> You're exactly right. Take a look at it here. <laughs> yeah, there's a clear block in the back right there. The circle's a little small for that big lineman, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> you got you get the point. <laughs> you got to boiler up that yeah. circle there. <laughs> Extra large, <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Sanzenbacher in the slot. Pryor under pressure. And he escapes out of bounds. Pick up of a couple of yards to the Ohio State 46. Good pressure by the Boilermakers up front. Kerrigan very active in the early going. Number 94 for Purdue. And this is when Terrell Pryor is most dangerous. When he gets outside, watch him keep his eyes down the field. He's looking to throw this ball. He doesn't want to run it, but he sees nothing's there for the defense. Good job of getting what he can. Smart football play. Sanzenbacher and Posey at the bottom of your screen. Third down, Pryor. Hit as he lets it go. Has his man out of bounds on the near side. And that's the big tight end, Jake Ballard, the senior out of Springboro, Ohio. He is short of the first down. A gain of about 11. And that would put uh, Ohio State fourth down at about eight. Yeah, that's the big tight end, but that's also the big problem, if you will, with Ohio State's offense at time. They are very conservative in the pass routes with Pryor. They don't push the field. They look for crossers and high manage and opportunity type routes. On and punt formation, John Toma averaging almost 39 yards per punt. Wayne L. Brave Sandy back deep. And this punt out of bounds. He kind of shanked that one. My goodness. He's given away souvenirs already. Ohio State has forced 14 turnovers. Purdue has committed to uh, 21 turnovers. Now, including that turnover earlier today that led to the Ohio State score. Joey Elliott, they moved the pocket for him. Nice throw and unable to hang on is the wide receiver Keith Carlos. Carlos had three drops last week at Minnesota. That's his first drop today. And a good read by Chekwa coming off. Ohio State that time sitting in his own defense. Chekwa reading the corner route. And then watch him adjust and drive on the ball. And that plant and drive, he times it up perfectly to dislodge the football. Jimmy Chekwa, quarterback, Ohio State. Buckeyes have press coverage at the top of the screen. Going the other way. This is Smith fighting his way into a trio of Buckeyes out near the 30-yard line. It's a gain of seven, almost eight yards, and will leave a third and manageable. Third down for Purdue, about three yards to go. Bolden alongside the quarterback, Elliott, in the shotgun. Elliott pulls it back, now late throw. Got his man over the middle, Valentine, and he swarmed under near the 39-yard line. First and 10, Purdue Boilermakers. Keith Smith leads this team in receptions. The fake to Bolden. Gibson puts early pressure on the quarterback on the key play. They outlet to the tight end, Kyle Adams. And Adams with a good run down to the 47-yard line, just short of the 48-yard line of Purdue. And they'd move the pocket, and they have. See them sprinkle in a little more run here as we go along. Bolden alongside the quarterback, and here comes Bolden. Spins off a one would be tackler, got by Doug Worthington, and got enough for the first down on a gain of four yards to the 50 yard line. Ohio State on top, first quarter. Purdue on the drive of the midfield marker. They empty the backfield. Elliott to the sidelines, tough play. Elliott, 6 of 8 passing, 53 yards in the early going. Second and 10. They set up the screen. 
Valentine spilled inside the 40, got a first down at the Buckeye 39 yard line. 11 yard play. Well executed. Well executed. Excellent play call by Nord. Once again, you have an aggressive defense that likes to get up the field. What do you do? You can slow them down by running the screen play. Opens up nicely. Valentine's able to move the chains. Ralph Bolden changing direction. A little east-west, he got about four out of that, and Holman made the tackle. Yeah, you'll see Hayward here. He's rushing from the right side. He's been an absolute beast. Comes up, still fighting, and there's a chop block right there. Gets him on the knee. And like I said, he's been that disruptive force up front, playing as well as anyone for Ohio State. Lawrence Wilson, the fifth-year senior, is in for him. Ohio State's defensive line, probably the deepest in the country. They go 10 deep for capability in that line. Out of the flank. Oh, my goodness. What a great play made by Kurt Coleman. Tenth play of this particular drive. Watermakers jump into the neutral zone. It looked like Lawrence Wilson, number 87, got an early start. Was there a reason for his movement? Oh, yeah, and it's called 1-4 Joey Elliott. What a hard count. Number 87, <laughs> defense, offside. Five-yard penalty. He made third down. I jumped on that because I love smart football. He knows he's got an up-the-field defense in the line. Use those hard counts. The cluster four receivers at the bottom of your screen. A little comeback screen here to Valentine, but Holman would have none of it. Carson Wake's 52-yard field goal attempt. He's one of two from 50-plus with a long of 59. That's the longest field goal made this season in the nation. Does he have enough? Is it good? No, it's not. Welcome back to ross Age Stadium. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Rebecca Harlow is with us on the sidelines. And... At the moment, Ohio State comes back offensively, leading 7-3. Terrell Pryor scoring on a six-yard touchdown run, capping a three-play 66-yard drive on the second offensive possession of the game for the Buckeyes. Well, and if you're Purdue, you start to look at points left on the field. They had a chance for three more to close in the margin. But defensively, they're getting after it. They're, they're pressuring Pryor, making him make quick decisions. United States Marine Corps leader of the game so far, Brandon Sane. 40 receiving yards, 18 rushing yards, off to a great start. And again, they're without Boom Heron this week, once again. Pryor trying to get to the outside and out of bounds, finally. Boy, they had him dead to rights back in the offensive backfield, couldn't wrap him up. Especially uh, Brandon King, the cornerback, was no match. Pryor's so intriguing because when he's running and you watch film, he doesn't look like he's moving that fast. But then you play against him, and he's the fastest thing moving on the field. And I think it just takes players, their eyes, time to adjust to just how fast he really is. Najee Tyler, a, a true freshman quarterback in the Purdue program, played Terrell Pryor in practice for the scout team this week, but they just couldn't duplicate the speed of Terrell Pryor. Pass incomplete. Ohio State scores a lot of points. Some of that comes from their defense and special teams, but the passing offense has not been real good this year, to say the least. They're facing third and passing right now. This is where number two has to get it done. Kerrigan forces Pryor to step up. Short pass, not enough for the first down. Holland, a sure tackle on Ray Small. John Toma in punt formation. Waynell Graves Sandy back deep. And he lets this one go. And it backs up. And is down by the Buckeyes inside the 10 yard line. Here they have eight inches of snow up there this morning. Holy cow. First and ten, they move the pocket once again, pass wide to the mark. And Ohio State right there. Bolden trying to cross up the defense, and they got a nice hole as he slanted off left guard. Out across the ten to the 12-yard line, a gain of six will leave a third down and four. Bolden second to the Big Ten, 20th nationally, averaging almost 100 yards rushing per game. Third down, they're one of three on third down conversions. Empty once again. 
Five wide receivers. Elliott throws a strike, got a first down. Ball is fumbled. Buckeyes have it. Keith Carlos had a tomahawk down, and the Buckeyes recover. Getting an interception going out. Watch how he just goes and rips this ball out. He just flat out rips the ball out of the receiver's hand. And Thaddeus Gibson grabbed it. Look at this. I mean, that is what you teach in practice each week. They gave Purdue the ball back, uh, and this must have been a change. Forward's progress had been stopped is what they're saying Ooh. before the ball was triggered loose. Forward progress was stopped. That's what we're being told, and that's why the Boilermaker offense remains on the field. Uh, they have some splaining to do, so to speak, to uh, Jim Trestle, and that's what they're doing right now. Well, I got the same look as Trestle because I just don't know how that gets ruled down. So it's first and we'll make it second first and ten for Purdue as the completion was enough for the first down. Let's see if the Boilermakers can take advantage. Bolden not going to get much here. Ross Aid Stadium. Purdue on a second down and eight. The fake to Bolden. Smith's got it. Fumbled it on the hit out of bounds and they're ruling incomplete. This team has a tough time hanging on to the football, don't they? Yeah, My it, goodness. It's almost like it's a hot potato. Third down and eight for Purdue. So two of four on third down conversions. Bolden in motion. Three-man rush Ohio State. Elliott to Smith. Cuts it back. Spinning his way. Got the first down. Just short of the 30-yard line. Joey Elliott is showing extreme patience and understanding of the offense in the pocket. He's letting those routes develop. And Purdue needs a timeout. They were running out of time on the play clock, apparently. First down for Purdue at the 30-yard line. Boilermaker territory early going second quarter. Elliott, Bolden. Holman was there. And if Holman didn't get him, Nathan Williams would have. Rebecca Harlow joins us with a special guest on the sidelines. Rebecca? That's right. I've got a, a one face here, Curtis Banner, who a lot of people recognize. Of course, he's playing on Sundays now. It's got to be tough for you to be back and not out there playing. It is. It is. You know, it's always a, a great time playing here. Uh, but, it, but it's nice to watch a little bit every now and then. And, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get on board this game. Joey Elliott's a good friend of yours. What have you been telling him, encouraging him here as he's going through the season? Well, you know, you know it's obviously a, a tough start you know, with, with a few losses there. We've been in, been in some close games that I really think, uh, you know, could have had if a few things go the other way. So I think just the best thing is just to stay positive. I think people have really done that on the team and from what I hear. So, you know, that's I think that's the best thing looking at it. Thanks, Curtis. Good luck with the Colts. Thank you very much. Guys. Thank you, Rebecca. Brian Roll, despite his best efforts, the quarterback, Joey Elliott, showed good heart in making that completion out to Keith Smith, and now it's third down and about three for Purdue. He showed heart, toughness, and moxie mm -hmm. to stand in the pocket. He had Brian Roll boring in on him. Full-grown middle linebacker. <laughs> Running downhill, partner. <laughs> third down, a little bit more than three. Elliott. Ooh, nice throw back between defenders for a first down. Smith, his favorite receiver, Brian Roll, makes the tackle up near the 43-yard line. First and 10, gain of six. And this is why Elliott leads the Big Ten in passing yards. His ability to extend the play. Watch him just slide outside. He's going to go there, slide a little bit right, let this route unfold, and boom, stick it in the window. Good job by Joey Elliott. And it was a fairly tight window. Tenth play of this drive. Purdue first down from the Boilermaker 42. Straight eye formation. Halliburton the fullback. Bolden running to daylight. To the 48-yard line. A gain of six yards. Second down. Halliburton the fullback. <laughs> Sir. Reward the big fella. He plows forward across the 50 into Ohio State territory to the 45-yard line. 
Ohio State's defense has a great luxury of being able to make plays without utilizing blitz packages. But I think in this game, because they're giving some time to Elliott and creating some creases, they're going to have to bring the heat here pretty soon. First and ten. Purdue, Wayne loves this bunch formation down the bottom. Elliott with Bolden to his right. And out of that bunch, they find an open receiver. Wayne L. Graves, Sandy, for a first down inside the 35-yard line of Ohio State. First and ten. To Bolden. Nothing there as the defensive end Thaddeus Gibson came in from behind. Today's Auto Owners Insurance game leaders. Terrell Fryer, 89 yards through the air. Brandon Sane, how about the job he's done in this first half so far? And Joey Elliott managing the game. We'll look at it. Coming into this ball game in six games, their opponents had run 50 more plays than had the Boilermakers this season. Smith in motion. Elliott. Incomplete. Third down for the Purdue Boilermakers. They are two for two on third down conversions on this drive. Third and long. Elliott now being pressured by Holman. Nearly threw an interception. Brian Roll could not hang on. Elliott trying to thread the needle to Keith Carlos in its fourth down. They bring the punting unit on, looking for field position. Chris Summers plays six inside the 20 coming into this ball game. Fourth down. Hangs this one high. Fair catch signal is made. It's muffed. It is muffed. And it appears Purdue has it. And they do. Small, the fair catch signal, given plenty of room, it goes right through his hands. And you wonder if there's been a little piercing of sharp sunlight coming in. He's looking right up at it. I wonder if it distracts him. The costly mistake there by Small. No question about it. Adam Wolf, the backup wide receiver, gathered it in. So the Boilermakers continue on this drive. Bolden in motion. They empty the shotgun. Elliott on a called run. And he gets a couple of yards down to the 10. Gain of three. Second down. Elliott drills the middle off the hands of Keith Smith incomplete. He was disengaging from linebacker coverage inside the five-yard line. And a lot of heat on that ball from Joey Elliott. Yeah, this was a good job of collisioning the wide receiver by the linebacker. All of a sudden, it disrupts his route. That ball did have a little mustard on it. Beg your pardon, it wasn't uh, Holman. He came over late. It was Brian Roll that the receiver was disengaging from. Now it's third down. And when you did, when you provide a collision on the wide receiver, it just throws off that timing pattern just enough that it causes an incompletion. It's so a third down and seven from the 10-yard line of the Buckeyes. Elliott to the end zone. Overshot Keith Smith, who was open. Elliott threw it to the inside shoulder. Smith appeared to be looking to the outside. Well, and Elliott was staring down the barrel. Watch this heat Coleman again. We know what a big playmaker he is. Forcing the action. Elliott had to get rid of it a little quicker than he wanted. Hits the errant throw. Carson Wiggs will try for the third time to put three points on the board. Made his first, missed his second from 52. And this will be a 27 yard field goal. And Wiggs has it through the uprights. It is good. So the Ohio State margin is cut to the slimmest of margins. Seven to six Buckeyes, first half. <laughs> We're going to see that last play. The blitz is going to come up right up the gut. But watch right here. Elliott cannot step into this throw. 
which is the reason that it's an errant pass. If he could step into that throw, that ball would have been on the number. Coming out of the break, the receiver looked to the outside shoulder and had to readjust. Lamar Thomas across the 30, and he absorbs a hit. First and 10, Buckeyes. 33-yard line, Purdue, Ohio State territory. Purdue showing blitz now. Sane runs to daylight. He wanted to go up the middle, but Sane cut it to the left, to the outside, and then cut it back. Sane once again breaks the tackle. He's into Purdue territory. First to Sane was Kwan short. He could not bring him down. And Sane picks up 10 yards to the 49-yard line of the Boilermakers as a result. Half his leg. Career best 113 yards rushing in his first career start at Indiana in a night game earlier this year. Pryor over the top. Sansenbacher one hand grab. Did he have possession before he stepped out of bounds? No, he did not. Pryor on the keep. He runs through an arm tackle and out of bounds close to the first down. He shot a stiff arm there at Warner and made him look silly. Third down. Blitz coming, and it is incomplete. Off the edge, they brought Torrey Williams, and Pryor threw it away. Going. Good high punt, fair catch signal made. Great Sandy able to successfully corral it at the nine-yard line of Purdue. Nice punt by John Toma. Well, you're going to see the blitz come off the edge. Right there, and Pryor, he's throwing it where it needs to be, but he just doesn't have time to stand in there. Watch it collapse the pocket. He gets rid of it. Those are some of the other things that you have to do at quarterback. Identify blitz, sometimes check out a play. The game summary, Ohio State leading by one. Couple of turnovers by the Buckeyes. Two field goals after turnovers for the Boilermakers. You know they'd like to have touchdowns. They got the ball deep in Ohio State territory both times. They roll the pocket for Elliott. Gets a good block from Halliburton. Penalty marker is down. Pass overshot Smith incomplete. Check what good coverage on the far sidelines across the Purdue 15-yard line. False start. Ohio State may turn down that penalty. Illegal formation offense. Five in the backfield. Penalties declined. Second down. Beg your pardon. The illegal formation, the call. Bill Lamagne is the uh, official we're hearing from here today. Second and ten as the Buckeyes turn down the penalty. That's an M.A. mental assignment. Can't have a lot of those if you're pretty. Not on, on a day when you're playing Ohio State. Exactly. Bolden trying to get downhill through a lot of traffic. Brian Roll, the linebacker, was out there to force him wider than wide, and then he got some help from his friends. When you watch Purdue, Chris, you get that feeling. You say, how are these guys 1-5 and five coming in? And then you look at the turnovers. Yeah. And the epidemic of turnovers here in West Lafayette has just crushed this team. Now it's third down. Elliott, good protection. Over the middle. Keith Carlos cannot hang on in traffic. Fourth down. Exactly how they worked on in practice. They had everything they wanted. Carlos just didn't deliver. He's got to make that catch. Elliott puts the ball in a catchable spot right down the hands. He goes up and gets it, but he can't pull it in. Fourth down, Chris Summers on in confirmation. Had a shank at Minnesota that really hurt last week. Can't afford one here. Goodness, he did it. He shanked it, and Ohio State will take over. They're going to get the football to the 30-yard line of Purdue. 18-yard punt. 7-6 Ohio State, 5.41 to go, second quarter. Brandon Sane and they stack him up as he tried to get around the left end. Werner 
and Kerrigan collaborate on the stop for the Bordermakers. Loss of one. Not allow an offensive touchdown in the Ohio State game, a game they lost 16 to 3. Pryor rolling out. Good pitch and catch. Devere Posey out of bounds at the 25. Rebecca Harlow, what do you have for us on the sidelines? Well, Wayne, we've seen Jason Warner having a strong game all ball game long here, but you know what? He's a great leader off the field. Earlier this week, he called a players-only meeting to, of course, address some tough subjects, but also to keep the morale up. Today on the sideline, he's been rallying his defense between every play, keeping these guys excited. We're definitely seeing that from him today. Thank you, Rebecca. Third down in five for Ohio State. They're coming on a blitz again. Hosey latches on. First down at the 15-yard line of Purdue on a 10-yard gain in the arms of Brandon King. Buckeyes leading by the slimmest of margins, but looking to add to that advantage. Pryor on a called play. Holland met him at the point of attack and held him up. Snaps in that game at Columbus last year. And that was a much more experienced Ohio State offense than this year. But here comes Brandon Sane to the end zone. Touchdown. Penalty marker down. Penalty marker down to the area of holding. Yeah, I think that one's coming back. Holding. Offense number 70. 10 yard penalty. Finger spot, second down. Second down, Ohio State. The fake the same pressure on Pryor. He fumbles it. Kerrigan, the sack, and the recovery. It's Purdue football. What a game. Ryan Kerrigan, the junior from Muncie, Indiana, is playing here today. Good pressure up front. And Kerrigan's holding the clinic on how to sack the quarterback and cause a strip. Two sacks last week at Minnesota. He's living in the Ohio State offensive backfield this week. Welcome back to Purdue, where Ohio State is struggling through this first half. Three turnovers by the Buckeyes, the latest right here. Well, Kerrigan just keeps fighting, and what I like is he's not content with getting a sack. He's trying to get the ball out, and he does it effectively for the second time today. Prior coming off the field, was very distraught with himself for putting that ball on the carpet. But that's just an outstanding play, high-effort guy by Kerrigan. And creating a big turnover. This is the most surprising stat of the afternoon. <laughs> I'll yeah. tell you. First down for Purdue at the Boilermaker 45. A little bubble screen. Well executed across the midfield marker into Buckeye territory. That time Kerrigan able to get the edge on Reckman. Zach Reckman, the Ohio State offensive tackle. Elliot, <laughs> they wanted to pitch that partner, but <laughs> there was a lot happening out there. And Joey just said, all right, now listen, I'm just going to tuck it in here and take what I can get. He got a yard, and it'll be third and one. Well, he said in practice, I don't remember pitching it to a Buckeye. Because, look, that's all that's there. If he pitches it, it's going to a Buckeye. So good job of tucking and reacting quickly by Elliot. Third down, a little bit less than two yards to go. I'm going to step out on a limb and say they did not draw it up that way. Mm -hmm. I'd say that limb is pretty thick. <laughs> You're not going to fall off of that limb. <laughs> third down. Four of nine and third downs for Purdue. Elliott pressured. Got his receiver, Smith. Nice throw. Good catch. Good awareness by Smith on the sideline in front of the Buckeye bench. Starts with Elliott, though. Good ball. Put that one right there. First down of the Buckeye 34. Juggling catch by Smith. Down he goes. Ball came loose. Play had been whistled dead. It's a first down of the 22-yard line of Ohio State. Jermail Hines in on the tackle. 12-yard gain. In Big Ten play, leads in about every statistical category. Well, that's telling me that Purdue's offense is pretty special. Because they've been moving the ball effectively. If they can hang on to the ball. And that's been a big if around here. Elliott under a blitz. They picked it up well. Nice throw. Valentine. And they say he stepped out of bounds at the 11-yard line when he made that cut. So it's enough for the first down. Just inside the 11. You've heard, but now it's second down and 10 off the incompletion. Durkin looking to throw to the end zone, and it's intercepted by the Buckeyes. 
Chindi Chekwa across the 10 to the 15 and out of bounds near the 20. First and 10 for Ohio State. Now, last week against Wisconsin, they took command of the game in the final minute of play on a touchdown drive. Let's see what they do here. Not an auspicious start by any means. Boy, the uh, Boilermakers, Neil Kerrigan up front, along with the short. Second team Responding on the fly. Brandon Sane goes down quickly. They have to get back on track. Second down for Ohio State. Pryor in the shotgun. Blitz coming. And the pass off the mark. I believe Sanzenbacher was the intended receiver on that particular pass. And third down conversions facing third and 14. Buckeyes came in eighth on third down conversions. And they're going wide. And Terrell Pryor gets it out across the 25. And down he goes near the 27-yard line. Torrey Williams on the Time flank out. of the defense made the Purdue. play. Third and final team timeout. Confirmation time for John Toma. Senior out of Louisville. This is his fourth punt. Fair catch signal made and the catch completed near the Purdue 31-yard line. No timeouts left. Two of the Boilermakers try here. Not a lot of time to work. Ohio State a two-deep safety shell. Elliott looking downfield. Oh, and a leaping grab made by Smith into Buckeye territory. Anderson Russell makes the stop. 46-yard line of Ohio State. 23-yard pass play. You want to work for your quarterback? That's exactly how you do it. Smith goes up, gets on his ladder for this one. Good job of pulling it in. Nice catch. First down. Let me ignite this uh, quick offense. Elliott. Gets it away. Smith once again out of bounds. 38-yard line of Ohio State on a gain of almost eight yards. Down to eight seconds remaining. Can they get it into Carson Wiggs' field goal range at least? Again, Wiggs' long is 59. That's the longest field goal in the country this year. He's ready to go in and kick it. <laughs> the mascot over there taking a couple of reps. <laughs> He's all boilered up, you know what? <laughs> Second down. Wide of the mark, intended for the tight end, Kyle Adams. Four seconds remaining. And here comes Carson Wiggs. He is kicking into what appears to be a slight wind out of the north. This would be a 55-yard field goal attempt. That's a big gust of wind going the other way. Out of the hold of Chris Stats. John Finch, the snapper. Here it is. Placement made. Kick to the upright. And it is good! Wow. Carson Wiggs drills it right down the boulevard. And at the end of the first half, the Boilermakers take the lead. We're set to go. Aaron Petri. So there's some wind on the floor of the stadium. What's interesting is that Carson Wiggs had that 55-yard field goal right into the wind and had plenty to spare. Al Tariq McBurse. True freshman. They've just taken the red shirt off him this week. And he gets it out across the 25-yard line. First and 10, 33-yard line for the Purdue Bottomakers, who start the third quarter with a two-point lead. Elliott, a little safe pass to Halliburton, the fullback running downhill. Oh, what a play made by the cornerback, Jim D. Chekwa. Wow. <laughs> Bolden alongside the quarterback. Elliott, quick release, nice look. Valentine on the ball. <laughs> I will say this. The Buckeyes usually bring out the best in their opponents. That's for sure. Try, try, try. Bolden. Well-designed play. Close to a first down. Gain of eight. Down to the 44-yard line of Ohio State. Bolden has very good vision and feel. 
when he's going in there. Watch it. He's going to come up. He's going to press this thing to the left. Then he's going to cut it back to the right. We'll see it here. He just has a good understanding. Watch this cut. He sees it there. And watch the cut back. Nicely done. Good vision and patience by Bolden. Bolden had 22 yards on eight carries in the first half. Second down. Halliburton, the fullback, trying to plow forward and got a couple of yards. Hayward, first to the ball. Brian Roll, the middle linebacker, helped out. It's a gain of a yard or two. And it, they're very stingy, though, once you get into the tw inside the 20. Elliott drills Smith. First down to the 30-yard line. And the Boilermakers come out on an assertive drive here to open the third quarter. 13-yard gain to a first and 10. Ross Holman made the tackle. Big time catch over the middle by Smith. He takes a shot. Now watch how he hops up. I've always learned when receivers get off the ground quickly like that after a big hit, that means they feel it. But they don't want you to know they feel it. <laughs> so they pop right up. Spoken like a true defensive back that you were. <laughs> Boy, he's been active, though. Well, hasn't he, though? Today. Well, you could see why he has among the league leaders in receptions coming into today's game. Elliott again. Now has to make it happen on his own. And escapes out of bounds inside the 25. Near the 24-yard line of Ohio State gain of six. Credit Purdue for being able to sustain long drive. Eighth play coming up in this drive. Purdue had 47 offensive snaps to just 24 for Ohio State in the first half. To your point. Second down. Bolden. Nicely done. Breaks a tackle at the 20. Swarmed under at the 15-yard line. Boy, there is a fire in these Boilermakers. Another first down on a gain of eight. Good backs can make a series of moves in the hole. Watch Bolden here. Finding the crease, waiting patiently for it. Hits it, gets downhill, runs with toughness. Boy, that's a great point, Chris. The good ones can make more than one move. They've got more than one move. Uh, in the line. There's a look at the offensive plays. Remember, Purdue came in. Their opponents had run 50 more plays than they had this season. First and 10. And Elliott needs a timeout. But the Bodemakers on the first drive of the second half are threatening. First and 10 at the OSU 15. Elliott. Oh, leaping grab made. Touchdown! What a catch by Valentine! An absolute thing of beauty. Watch his back shoulder fade. Excellent throw by Elliott. Valentine goes up and gets it. Check, please. <laughs> Big score for Purdue. And that is a design back shoulder fade. Carson Wake's point after is good. Only the fifth touchdown given up by Ohio State's defense in the last 21 quarters of play. Purdue adds to its lead 16 to 7. Eight play, 67 yard drive to start the second half. Boy, no one told Purdue how great this team is supposed to be. Watch this execution. Good job there. Defensive backs are taught to stay on top of the wide receivers. So, Elliott, you're going to see little. He throws it to the back shoulder, sees the defense back up top. Good job of playing basketball by Valentine, using his body to shield the defender. Elliott. Very decisive in his throws for the most part today, but especially on that particular drive. Well, decisive in his ball placement is where it needs to be. I mean, he's, he's throwing some great balls, putting it where only his wide receivers can go up and make a play. Carson Wiggs kicking it away. Ray Small from the 20. Look out. And Small is dragged down across the 45-yard line. So a very short kick. They mark it just short of the 40, the 38. 
Pryor on the pitch, off the mark, look out! Wow! Sane able to gather it back in before Carlino could get there. Loss of six in the relative early going of the third quarter. Pryor, small, and he's got it at the 35-yard line. Make them have to earn this first down in this conversion. Third down and 13 from the 35 of the Buckeyes. They're one of five on third down conversions. Pryor under a blitz. They picked it up well. Pryor unable to escape. Jason Werner, who missed a couple of tackles on the opening drive for Ohio State today, on the second drive for Ohio State today, that led to a touchdown, did not miss his man that time. Well, you called it up. They picked up that blitz right there, but you know what? It still worked because it forced Pryor to step up right into Werner. Good job by Purdue of rushing, getting to the football. John Toma in punt formation. Bearcat signal made. And Grace Sandy's got it. The 21 yard line of the Bodemakers. Leading 16 to 7. First and 10, the Bodemaker 21. Elliott. Valentine could not stretch far enough for that one. That's a uh, Northwestern word there, partner. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to explain that to the rest of us. This is a waking class. I think it looks like a pretty good color picture there. <laughs> Elliott. All right, all right, yeah, he probably should have taken it himself. And he just threw that right through the hands of his tight end, Jeff Lindsay. So third and ten. Third and ten. Five receivers set, empty gun. Elliott under a blitz ball tip, nearly intercepted. Incomplete. And you have to corral this guy. Summers punt. Small makes the catch. No fair catch signal. Tackled immediately. Excellent play made by Albert Evans, a safety. 40 yard punt. No return. Good job at Evans. Now, you know, these guys take pride on special teams. They've seen the film. They've read the papers how small went 96 yards of the house. So it means a lot to him to stuff him. His reads and his proficiency. That's not last play Purdue's bringing a jailbreak. See if they stay with it here. First and 15. Fire looking downfield. Going deep. Intercepted. Brandon King. To the 20. To the 25. He's to the 30. Sane brings him down across the 35 of the 40-yard line. And this is where Terrell Pryor's growth, if it hasn't gone in reverse, it's certainly slow. His ability to throw the ball down the field, he's just throwing that up for grabs. The ball had a lot of loft under it. It allowed the DB to look close and make a great play on it by King. Good awareness, but that's just giveaway by Pryor. Okay, fourth turnover for Ohio State. And here come the Watermakers. First and ten at their 40. A little bubble screen here. Nice cut made by Valentine, and he's spilled to the 47-yard line. Combination of Brian Roll and Jermail Hines on the tackle for Ohio State. Moved the ball for 211 yards in the first half. They had to feel good about the way they were able to sustain drives. I mean, Ohio State came in giving up about 270 yards a game offensively. Now the interception on an errant throw. And right there to pick it off, Devon Torrance. That's something the Boilermakers could ill afford to do. Give it right back to the Buckeyes. First interception of the day for Purdue. Well, you're going to see it right here. Pressure's going to come, and it's going to break a pipe here. Because look, he cuts the block. Nice job of closing. Bad throw with good pressure from Ohio State. You got first and 15. Had an open receiver. Ball hung up. Broken up incomplete. McLean, the safety, came over to make a play on it. 
and now the uh, intended receiver on that play, Devere Posey, was motioning toward Terrell Pryor. Posey held his arms, hands open to Pryor, so, you know, like they weren't on the same page. Polaris' hardest working player, Ryan Kerrigan. Who else? He brought his hard hat today. Second and 15. Pryor dumps it off. Posey across the 40 to the 44 yard line. Two interceptions in this third quarter alone. First down, Boilermakers. Can they make them pay with this Ohio State defense stiffen up once again? Bolden on the first down carry for three yards to the 44 of Ohio State. Ohio State, five turnovers, three fumbles lost, and two interceptions. Just a pile driving move there. It's a big third down for Purdue and Elliott passing down. Five and a half to go in the third. Third and four at the 41 of Ohio State. Elliott, Smith, does he have enough? It'll depend on the spot of the ball. He does to the 36 yard line. Out of the eye, and first and 10, Halliburton gets the call, and he draws a trio of Buckeyes. Holman first, Thaddeus Gibson, and Brian Roll to follow. Ohio State, the seventh-ranked team in the country, trailing 16-7. to We're under four and a half minutes to go in the third. Second down and six. That's Smith in motion. Elliott takes it himself to the 30, to the 25, out of bounds. Got a first down. 24-yard line of Ohio State. Well, these two... These two have gotten into these kinds of skirmishes in the past. 2004, the Bottomakers have the lead. And they continue with the turnover right there. And hang on for a 24-17 victory, November 13, 2004. Empty backfield here. Five wide once again. Bubble screen. Valentine to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, to the house. Touchdown! This place just exploded. And watch the bubble screen, but watch the moves at the end. Read the blocks, cut it up. Great job of running with the rock after the catch by Valentine. Carson Wiggs for the point after. And he's got it through the uprights. Ohio State has won 16 consecutive Big Ten Conference road games. They're trying to tie Michigan with a record 17, but they're down 23 to 7 with 3:35 to go in the third. Plays work best when you have aggressive guys that love to get up the field quickly. Good job of Purdue of calling that at the right time. Valentine again, good moves to find pay dirt. He certainly knew what to do when he got it. He's the guy they talked about could be their big play receiver. Smith is their leading receiver. But Valentine has that big play ability. Thomas muffs it. Across the 10, short of the 15. Once again, Robert Macy on the special teams tackle. And Ohio State will start inside their 15. They have had trouble hanging on to the ball. Well, they have. And quite honestly, they've taking a few punches in the face by Purdue. They're awfully bloody now. We're going to see how they fight back offensively. And Terrell Pryor has been very frustrated here in this third quarter especially. And here come the Buckeyes. Under three and a half minutes to go. Third quarter. Sane alongside Pryor. Pryor looks to the air. And he's sacked inside the 10 near the five-yard line. 
Mike Neal led the way. Gerald Gooden was also there. Well, Pryor says, hey, I'm looking up, and I see only black jerseys. Because watch this pocket collapse. Nowhere to go. Good job of fighting by Purdue. Pryor just does not look comfortable in the pocket. It's closing quickly on him. Purdue's forcing him to make quick decisions, which has been his albatross. Loss of nine, second and long. Pryor takes off. Up to make the hit, Albert Evans. Make a quick decision. Corners are not quite press coverage, but almost. Here's Pryor on third down. Incomplete. Pass attempted for Deron Carter. He didn't appear to be looking for it. Knocked down by David Pender. And these Boilermakers have been all over it here in the third quarter. Well, this is an experienced secondary. So they did not bring the heat. They sat back in the zone. And they challenged Pryor to be able to fit the ball in the window. Played soft coverage. Now watch Pender slide back in his zone. Extends to make the play. Great range by David Pender. Purdue had seven starters coming back this year on defense, including the entire secondary, and they were number one against the pass a year ago. So they are capable, no question about it. Brave Sandy makes the first man miss and is covered up close to the midfield marker. Joey Elliott and company leading 23 to 7 will have good field position to begin their next drive late stages third quarter He's had a good game plan today for Ohio State. Yeah, he's called it Jim thus far Ralph Bolden, I think he was tripped by his offensive lineman the guard is Zach Reckman back play. adversity killers Yeah, you know and, and the thing is Chris their schedule. No one really gave them any credit for this season coming up because their schedule was so difficult. All those road games against top quality competition like Penn State and then Wisconsin, but they are uh, answering the call. Gain of a couple of yards there. Third down coming up. And long, and they keep it on the ground. Kind of conservative call there. They're just going to turn it back over to the Buckeyes. As Big Ten football presented by the United States Marine Corps. Start of the fourth quarter. This punt carries down to the one-yard line and barely escapes into the end zone. The Buckeyes will get it out of their 20-yard line. But First and ten for Ohio State. Brandon Sane alongside the quarterback prior in the shotgun. Small at the top of your screen. They've got a slot to the bottom and prior looking towards Small. Over the top to Small and he's got it. They beat McLean down the sidelines. McLean and Brandon King. And the biggest pass play of the day for Ohio State. 38 yards to a first down of the Purdue 42. And that was a beautiful strike by Pryor down the field. Cover two. You got to reroute this guy. King's holding him. Oh, double move. Nice by Small. Good range by McLean, but not good enough. That double move lost Brandon King. It sure did. Safety over the top, getting there, but getting there. Dean from the 47 of Purdue. Seven penalties for Ohio State here today. None for Purdue. Small inside the 40, covered up near the 38-yard line. Small, a big play maker. He did it on special teams a week ago. The 96-yard return for a touchdown against Wisconsin. This is going to be some clock management for Pryor, utilizing his weapons. Small's got good speed. Pryor running option, and he calls his own number. To the 30, to the 25-20, foot race down the sidelines. Pryor reaching goal line, and they're going to rule him down inside the five. This is what he can bring to the table. And when he runs the football, sometimes it feels as though he has a gear that no other player has in the field. See that knee hit, touch the ground. Right knee goes down, yeah. left knee down, and he's down. That's good call. 35-yard run, first down for the Buckeyes, first and goal to go. At the Purdue three-yard line. Pryor again. Captured at the pass, gain of a yard down to the two. The Boilermakers who've keyed on Pryor most of today, Short and Neal collaborate on the tackle. A couple of big defensive linemen. 
and those two guys have been stalwarts up front. We get a chance to look at Don Landholm sharpening his pencils over there. He knows that you got to keep Ohio State out of the end zone, trying to limit him to a field goal. Second down, goal to go at the two. Prior to the air, overshot his tight end, Jake Ballard, at the back line of the end zone. Now, Ballard's 6'6", six, six, so he's a hard guy to overshoot when you have time. This ball is not even close. And, you know, it's not like he was trying to drop it in over coverage because, as you could see right there, Torrey Williams wasn't close. Yeah. That was a wide-open receiver. That's, that's pitch and catch. Just 9 of 18 for this week. Last week, he was 5 of 13. Third down goal to go at the 2. Prior option, not going to get there. Tried to cut it back. Ryan Kerrigan and Chris Carlino cut him off. Fourth down, what do you do here, partner? Oh, they got to go for it. I would go for it here. Purdue's defense, though, has stymied them up front and to a certain degree kind of taking the heart a little bit. And, and maybe that's the reason that Trestle's going for this field goal. It's fourth and a full two yards. And so they'll try the field goal off the toe of Aaron Petri. And if they'll try to draw him off sides, it's just an 18-yard field goal. If not, it speaks to the respect that they have for this Purdue defense. Whoops, got a flag down. Go away again. Number 20. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. This game has been very unlike Ohio State in many respects. You know, penalties, that's what, their eighth penalty. Purdue's yet to commit a penalty. Uh, they are, I should say, yet to have a penalty accepted against them. That's the key. A little bit longer field goal, maybe a little better angle here. 24-yard field goal attempt. Aaron Petri, Big Ten leader in field goals and scoring. And he successfully has this one through the upright. So the Buckeyes get three, but still trail by 13. 11.50 to go in the fourth. Kick it away. Still early going fourth quarter. Plenty of time in this one. Oh, sure. This kick is going to squib across the 20. Juggled for a moment. This is the freshman they activated today, Al Tariq McBurse. And he's got good field position for Joey Elliott in the offense of the Boilermakers out near the 45-yard line on a 29-yard return. Verizon Wireless connection today is Aaron Valentine. Well, he is flash big play ability. I've been impressed with how he attacks the ball in the air, but I'm more impressed with his run after the catch ability. First and ten, they cluster a trio of receivers at the bottom of your screen. The fake to Bolden. Well, they get plenty of time. Nice throw to Smith. Boy, he really looks for number eight. And he's got him at the Ohio State 40-yard line, first and 10. People with 42 receptions. Number eight today, 12 receptions, 125 yards. Smith in the slot, bottom of your screen. Elliott to Valentine. Valentine went out of bounds and came back in. I believe he made the catch out of play anyway. So they just ruled incomplete. So the official tossed his hat to indicate that. Valentine was clearly out of bounds. Yep. Second down and 15 for Purdue. Leading 23 to 10. Nearing 10 minutes to go in the game. Smith. First down inside the 30 of Ohio State. And are they ruling incomplete? They are. Apparently his foot came down out of bounds. The first foot down was out of bounds. Had to be. Ooh, boy, that's close. 
down the field is incomplete. And let's see. Boy, another good look by our crew. Man, oh man, that's as close as it gets. The previous play is under further review. Very close. Good looks on these sideline plays by the crew here today. Oh yeah, this one doesn't get any better. We got a shot at right there. Mm. That's an outstanding look. That was a 17 yard pass play that would have set up first down if they. Uh... <laughs> if they uh, do not overturn the call on the field, then it will be third down 15 for Purdue. But again, they need indisputable. Video evidence and Jim Kemmerling is the replay official upstairs. Following your view, play stands as called. Incomplete pass. So that leaves Joey Elliott and company facing a third down. I'll give you one last look at it. So third down and 15. Still 10.36 to go for the game. Purdue leading by 13 at the Ohio State 45. Elliott. Just a three-man rush, and he takes off. Not going to get the first down. Out of bounds near the 32-yard line. He had Coleman and Roll coming up on him, and you too would steer out of bounds if those two were coming at you. Well, you're right about that. And that's, just, <laughs> that's just smart. Yeah, so that's so that self-preservation. <laughs> so you don't get the first down, but you live to uh, maybe go for it on fourth. Sometimes you got to do that. <laughs> Well, I don't think he's going to go for it up fourth. They're going to bring on Carson Wiggs, and why not? Wiggs with the three field goals today, 32, 27, 55 yards. And this one will be about a 49-yard field goal attempt. Off the right hash with the wind to his back. He missed a field goal of 55 yards in this direction. A kick to the uprights. And it is good! Carson Wiggs. Fourth field goal of the day puts Purdue on top 26 10 with 10 minutes to go. Carson Wiggs set to boot it away. Seventh ranked team in the nation, the Buckeyes on the ropes. Can they respond? Here's the kickoff. Small across the 20, tripped up short of the 30 yard line. First and 10 coming up for. Ohio State and the uh, linebacker made the stop Wayne Beckford 20 yard return and Wayne Purdue defensively they've been sitting in that soft zone coverage the stage of the game Iowa did defeat Wisconsin after spotting the Badgers 10 points beat them in Madison I'll tell you something the Iowa Hawkeyes might be the toughest team in this conference far none First and ten. Pryor, nice pinpoint pass. Devere Posey, roped down by Chris Carlino, the middle linebacker, and a gain of seven yards. Let's check in with our sideline reporter, Rebecca Harlow. Rebecca? Well, guys, I have Travis Doerr. She knows exactly what it's like to be Carson Wiggs. Of course, he's had a huge game today. You're back at Purdue getting your Ph.D. One of your studies is in field goals. What have you learned? Yeah, well, we've learned some interesting things. You know, field goal kickers maybe more than any other position. They're an intuitive bunch. You know, they think about the wind. They think about their surroundings. The 11 guys in front of them trying to block the kick. So we wanted to take a look at what's actually going through a kicker's mind and what do they feel when they experience success or failure. And, you know, Ohio State, of course, comes into the house. You know you want to beat this team today. Are you proud of what your team is getting done here? Well, absolutely. And Carson especially is having a big game and showing that the special teams can really contribute to a pretty victory. It's not over yet. The Buckeyes are a great team, but they're playing well. Uh, so we'll continue to watch you. Thank you. Bet. Terrell Pryor and Posey coming back for it. Pender with a cure tackle, gain of about four. And it's interesting what they were talking about down there in the sidelines. Jan Stenerud used to tell me, the great Hall of Fame kicker of the Kansas City Chiefs, said the first thing he did every day when he got up was check the weather. He'd look outside, check the weather, especially the wind. <laughs> Most kickers are worried about weather forecasts. Yeah, That's the first thing. And intuitive. Like I said. Second down. 
Pryor takes it himself. Slips one defender. Not only is he big, but he's very elusive. And he picks up about five and leaves a third down and one coming up. Well, he's bigger than the DNs just about for Purdue. And he's hard to get on the ground. You have to bring your feet when you tackle him because if you don't, he's going to run right through. Third down, a yard to go. One of nine on third downs are the Buckeyes. From the midfield marker, Pryor able to pick it up. Thing wound up. We we knew the Hawkeyes had won, but we didn't see how it finished. And this one far from finished. Carter down to the 25-yard line. Deron Carter, the much ballyhooed recruit out of St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. That's Chris Carter's son, former Ohio State standout NFL Pro Bowler. Well, he does a nice job of sitting down this little dig right route, excuse me, right in front of the safety. 24-yard gain. Ohio State first and 10 of the Purdue 25. Pass a little bit wide of the mark. Posey unable to come back for it. Second and 10. Four yard run by Terrell Pryor pushed him over a thousand, so he joins that club of Buckeyes. Led by Cornelius Green. Second down. Empty backfield, five receivers set. Good protection. Pass thrown just a bit behind Sansenbacher. And with a lot of mustard on it, Sansenbacher unable to haul it in. When was the last time uh, Terrell Pryor's jersey was this dirty? Well, I would guess the USC game, which also happened to be the last time this team trailed in the fourth quarter. So this is a bit of uncharted territory for that guy. And can he put the ball in the end zone will be the true test. Third down and ten. Pryor on his own now. Sansenbacher coming back for it and a reception made. There's a penalty marker down, but the catch made in front of Sansenbacher by Devere Posey for the touchdown pending the outcome of the flag. And I'll tell you right now, the the infraction was pass interference on the defense. This one's gonna stand. Pass interference, defense, penalties declined. Play results, touchdown. And that's a 25-yard touchdown play. You talk about coming out of the playbook. Holy man. Yeah, this is this is back in Jeanette, Pennsylvania when he worked on this play. This is from the schoolyard. Rolls out right, throws it up, and there's the penalty. <laughs> Tell you what, I thought that pass was going to reach Sansenbacher, and DeVere Posey didn't let it. <laughs> it, was, it was aimed for Sansenbacher. <laughs> Now Ohio State going for two, down 26 to 16. Blitz coming from Purdue. Pryor on the rollout. Pryor's got two points. 26 to 18. So they get it down to a one possession game with still 7-14 to go. Well done. Terrell Pryor comes out of the playbook for a 25-yard touchdown pass and then converts for two. The Buckeyes are back in it. What you wear for Halloween? <laughs> Short kickoff at the 10. Bobbled for a moment. Picked up by the freshman. And he's short of the 20-yard line. Al Tariq down at the 19-yard line of Purdue now. Be very interesting, Chris, to see how the Boilermakers handle this now with their lead down to eight. They need a sustained drive, obviously. The time of possession becomes very important now. Quick look. Lindsay, the tight end. First down. Good start to this drive. Out to the 30-yard line up Purdue. Gain of 11. Ryan Roll made the stop. It'll be a good matchup. Bolden. Boy, he started to the left, looked at the middle, and then was swarmed under. Holman was there, along with Williams. Second and 11. Press coverage on the corners. Elliott, incomplete, put it in the only place where his man could make a play on it, Smith, and that passed a little bit too low. So it becomes a third and 11 for Purdue. You can tell he's thinking on his feet. He put that ball low and away. Yep. 
I mean, maybe your receiver can make a play on it, but if he doesn't, no one else does. Yep. Well, third down here. They're 7 of 15 on third downs, are the Boilermakers. They come with their share of screens today. Two receivers top of your screen, one to the bottom, tight end at the bottom of your screen as well. Elliott under immediate pressure, and down he goes. Well, they brought the safety, Kurt Coleman, and Elliott could not juke him. And a loss of yardage back inside the 25-yard line. You got the sense that Ohio State had to bring the heat at some point. Good job of Coleman corralling inside. I tell you, he's an impressive safety, isn't he? Yeah. Kurt Coleman. He has tremendous range. But he's great in all facets of the game. Chris Summers in punt formation. Small chasing it. It backs up, taking a Ohio State bounce and is down by the Boilermakers. 39-yard line of Ohio State. Just a 36-yard punt. Two of them. First and 10 for Pryor. Down eight. And he starts by throwing a strike to number eight, the Veer Posey. To get a wide out at Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the handoff and straight up the middle. Sane is close to the first down. Oh, you, you don't get the feeling, you know, Ohio State has had it. anything consistent going offensively. Their ground game is only in spurts. Their passing game has been hit or miss. The turnovers, you, you don't get the feeling Ohio State has anything they can really go to except maybe. Terrell Pryor, the creativity of Pryor, and he's looked like he's just going to quarterback sneak this, and he does. Did he get it? When you're 6'6 six, six, and almost 240, <laughs> that's quite an obvious call, and there's no doubt Purdue was expecting it, but Mike Neal and company, the bottom of the pile, Quan Short were powerless to stop it. It's first down, just short of the midfield marker. Juggled and dropped incomplete. Pass thrown behind to Beer Posey. He almost was able to make a play on it, and that one very nearly could have been intercepted as well. Catch it. I thought it was a catchable ball. Not exactly where he wants it out in front. But he has to be able to adjust and make this catch. Yeah, he, he should have pulled that in. Mm. Second and ten. Eight-point lead for Dew. We're under four minutes to go for the game. Seventh-ranked Ohio State. Pryor takes off. And a nice tackle made by Jason Werner. Tripped him up just inside the 50 of the 46-yard line of Purdue. And it's third down Ohio State. This is a really good play by Werner because he comes in for the blitz, but he's able to disengage right there. Disengage with the offensive lineman to make the tackle on Pryor. Werner missed two tackles on Ohio State's first scoring drive of the day, but he's been sound ever since. Pryor, nice look. Devere Posey, first down, Buckeyes, at the 34-yard line of Purdue. We welcome those of you joining us from Michigan, Delaware State. It has been the Aaron Valentine Show in this second half. Two touchdown receptions for Valentine. And a field goal by Carson Wiggs, who has four field goals here today. Terrell Pryor made some magic here. And Devere Posey, and then the Pryor took it over on a two-point conversion. Small erased immediately. Good short tackle made by Torrey Williams. But a pickup to the 29-yard line of five yards. Second and five coming up for the Buckeyes. Inside of three minutes to go here. Ohio State trying to win its 17th consecutive Big Ten Conference road game. That would equal Michigan for the longest streak of all time. Pryor under a blitz. Got it away just in time, and Bender broke it up from Posey. Third down, Ohio State. Third and five. Boy, that was a great blitz call. Watch the blitz come from the left side of your screen. Comes late. Fire has to get rid of it. Feels that he gets rid of the ball. That was Evans that came late off the edge. 
Ohio State is four for four on their last four third down conversions. Fire has been decisive in this drive. Third and five. The sophomore alone in the shotgun. Under pressure. And he's sacked. Outside the 35 yard line. From the 38, it'll be fourth down. Ohio State Buckeyes take a timeout. This defense has been working all day. They are putting it in. And that front four, just the surge, the low pad level, they've been disruptive all day long and given high effort for Purdue. Keon Brown and Mike Neal would not be denied. They did not let Terrell Pryor get out of there. And Neal, for his effort, nonetheless, comes up a bit shaky. Well, we, we just saw it there, Wayne. Five sacks. Pryor's a hard guy to sack because he's such an elusive quarterback. And you have to think Coach Trestle there imploring his team here on fourth down. Well, let's see what they try. They are fourth down and 14 yards to go. The football is at the Purdue 38-yard line. 2.24 to go for the game. Purdue leading by eight. I would say Trestle was speaking to his O-line to give time to Pryor on this play. But they've got to have it out of that offensive line, no doubt. Fourth down. Ball game hanging in the balance. Pryor chased. Lofts it. And it's knocked down incomplete. Purdue takes over with 2.16 to go in the game. It looked like he was trying to get that to small. But closest to the football was David Pender, and he knocked it down. In a word, this Purdue defense has been relentless in every layer. Up front, their linebackers, that secondary has played lights out. See that play by Pender, but collectively, this has been a relentless performance by Purdue. Ohio State has two timeouts remaining. 2.16 left to go in the game. Jim Trestle, seventh-ranked Buckeyes on the ropes in West Lafayette. First and ten, Bordermakers. Bolden, the tail of the tandem in the eye. Bolden skipping to the outside and wrapped up. Quickly, first to the football, Jermail Hines, the Phillips HD player of the game. Well, who else but Joey Elliott? If it's not Elliott, it's going to be the kicker, Carson Wicks. But if Joey Elliott has been outstanding here today. No, he has. He's been spectacular. And the first time I've gotten a chance to see him live, he is the field general for Purdue. He makes everything go. He's been decisive. He understands the offense. He's letting guys make plays around him and executing exactly what the offensive coordinator has called coach Gary Nord. These two teams that we showed you a flashback earlier have played some uh, outstanding ball games, some titanic clashes over the uh, recent years. And this is another. And Purdue coming in here, one and five, having lost five in a row. And the coaches kept telling us, I mean, we kept going through the lineup and they said, this guy's getting better, this guy's getting, you know, and it just didn't reflect it in the the record and uh, they felt they all felt to a man that hey we're a lot better football team than one and five and you know what they've held on to the football somewhat today they have forced turnovers by ohio state and you can see that if they don't commit the turnover mistakes purdue can hang with people and if There's they no can doubt hang about on that. here what validation it would be for their team to the outside world second down Elliott slides to a stop at the 39. 
Take a look at the Hampton Hotel's touchdown of the game. This is the second touchdown reception by Valentine, and he made most of this on his own. He did. Screen play. Gets it over the middle. Able to run through tackles, and he just smells the end zone. 23-yard pass play from Joey Elliott to Aaron Valentine. Ohio State has exercised its final timeout. We have 2.04 left to go for the game. Third down and nine for Purdue. And again, it's a one possession game. And the guy that's been sort of working those interior cuts for Purdue all day has been Keith Smith. Number eight. See if he lines up in the slot and if they try and find him, sit him down in that that defense of Ohio State. Well, you've got to wonder, Jarrell Pryor, hoping he gets one more shot at it. Purdue trying to hang on. If they pick up a first down here, it's pretty much ball game. Third and nine. Seven of 16 on third down conversions. For the Boilermakers, Joey Elliott and company. From the Purdue 39. They empty the shotgun. Bolden in motion. Elliott, little bubble screen. And a penalty marker down. A face mask coming up on Doug Worthington. Who makes the tackle? Oh my. Personal foul, face mask. Number 84. 15 yards, tapped onto the end. Automatic, first foul. Worthington does a nice job of sniffing out this play, but clearly we get a shot of it there. Face mask to allow Purdue to move the chains. The ninth penalty against the Buckeyes may have cost them in the end. 26-18 Purdue, Ohio State out of timeouts. And the Boilermakers first and ten. Victory formation for Purdue, they can run it down. How about this? First conference loss of the season for Ohio State. Second loss overall. And folks, the Boilermakers, this was no fluke. They worked it every step of the way. And we should emphatically state that Ohio State didn't lose this game. Purdue went out and won it. They took the fight to Ohio State on offense, on defense, and in the special teams game. After a season opening win over Toledo, five straight losses. The last time Purdue defeated the seventh ranked team of the country, October 29th, 1949, when they defeated Minnesota 13 to 7. Joey Elliott, what a job he did. Masterful. The turnovers they forced on Ohio State were forced turnovers. Yep. And then for the most part. Yep. Kerrigan, Neal. Those safeties flying around. Brandon King, Big Day Pender, Williams, McLean. You know, we talked to Danny Hope, and he said, you know, this is a team that I love. They give me great effort. They pour everything in. But there's been a series of plays, almost an enigma, of why they've lost. I believe them. They storm the field in West Lafayette. 